This is probably the easiest sharp knife, um, false sharp knife demo you can fall for. You know, we've all seen those, uh, you know, uh, ads on Facebook and Instagram, uh, and even on YouTube of a, you know, a knife, of a knife cutting a tomato that was dropped from the height of a counter, or, um, you know, or if you go to knife forums, you guys see people posting clips or photos of them slicing tomatoes, you know, paper thin, they say, on their favorite 10,000, 12,000, 20,000 grit whetstone. So I devised the absolute simplest test I can come up with that will debunk that. If you guys actually want to see the entire, I think it was like 30 minute video, 30, 40 minute video of the sharpening and polishing of all these knives from start to finish uncut, let me know in the comments, give the video a thumbs up, just so I can show you guys that none of this is made up. Um, you can replicate 100% of my results on your own time. Uh, a lot of folks on these forums and all these other knife places are saying that you need to have a 8,000 grit, 10,000 grit, 12,000 grit whetstone to make this sort of knife this sharp. I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it with a 1,000 grit, 3,000 grit and a 6,000 grit whetstone. So again, I'll leave a link to all the items in this video in the video description. You guys can check it out, read up on it on your own time. Before I sharpen the knives, I brick them. <laughs> yeah, so the brick has made its debut on the Perfection channel at the new studio. And I didn't simply, you know, do 20 strokes per knife. And I basically grinded the knives from tip to heel, tip to heel, back and forth. I would guess that each knife has got the equivalent of, I would say at least 50 strokes per knife. And so the knives were completely dull. You can see they won't cut my finger, they won't cut any paper, they were just tearing the paper up when I try to cut them. They weren't doing anything. Knife number one got a sharpening and stropping session on the Cerex 1000. Knife number two went on the Cerex 1000 and then the Oka 3000. And then knife number three went from the Cerex 1000 to the Shiramine 6000. So the challenge was, can I cut paper thin slices of tomatoes on these knives without going over 6000 grit? Now I know that if I put these knives on 8000 grit, 10,000 grit or over grit whetstone, I can easily cut those paper thin slices. Now you guys know me, I like to do things on the cheap. I wanna show you guys that you guys can get amazing results not spending a lot of money. I mean, you guys can easily go and spend 200, $300 on a 10,000 grit plus whetstone but I want to show you guys that you guys can have just as much fun as all those other folks who spend a lot of money on the whetstones just by honing your technique. And so that's exactly what this video is all about. After I sharpened these three knives here, I was like, you know what? Let's just do a little bonus session and do it on the Atoma 140 and see what kind of an edge I can get. So same thing, the prototype knife got its breaking and then sharpened on the Atoma 140 and then stropped on the Atoma 140 as well. That was it. I didn't put it onto the leather strap at all. Okay, so that was, keep that in mind. That's very important that you remember that. These are silicon mats. When they are dry, they are fairly sticky. Okay, but just so you guys are aware of that. When they're wet though, they are like glass. They are extremely slippery. You can see during the cut test that the tomatoes were sliding all over the place. As a matter of fact, on the tomato number one, I left the stem on, I didn't cut anything. I basically just flipped the, the tomato on its stem side and started cutting. I did manage to cut the tomato without making it flat. A lot of these other tests, they'll cut basically half of the tomato off, give it as the a widest base as possible, then plant the tomato down on a really nice dry cutting board. And it gives the tomato a lot of grip when you do that. And so I intentionally left this entire mat cutting surface wet with the water from the sharpening and then the water from the tomato juices. Yeah, so knife number one, you can see these slices here are, well, they are fairly thin. Uh, I don't know if you guys see that from where you're sitting. These slices are very, very thin. I mean, they are wafer thin. They are completely transparent. You can see almost every cell in the tomato skin or the tomato meat. And that was just Cirax 1000 finished. 1000 grit, that was it. Now. After I did my second stone, I said, oh, I should have gone the other way around. I should have started on the 6,000 wet stone in terms of the cut test and then worked my way down. But I didn't do that. I didn't plan it properly. So I <laughs> forgive me that I did this test the wrong way around. Uh, once I did the initial cut test on the Cerex 1000 knife, I said, you know what? It, the, the test is over. There's no point in it. 3,000 for sure was gonna do the same thing. And you can see the 3,000 grit wet stone or well, the finish from the 3000 grit whetstone is, the results are exactly the same, wafer thin, or is wafer thin the right word? 
paper thin is what we're, we're looking for, right? Paper thin, super transparent. I mean, there is not a whole lot here to look at. Um, so then I went from the 3000 to the 6000 and the same thing, the same results, ultra, ultra thin. Um, these are actually from the uh, 140, which we'll get to in a second. So you can see the cuts here are extremely thin. I mean, there is like, you know, I mean, I don't know how much more thin I can get. And keep in mind, this is with the tomatoes sliding around like crazy. And so after all that was done, I said, how will the 140 Atoma perform? Because uh, that's to me the ultimate challenge, right? This is the absolute coarsest plate stone that I have. I don't have any wet stones or other diamond plates that is coarser than the Atoma 140. And lo and behold, yeah, I mean, look at this. This is cutting the tomato just as well as all the other knives. I'm able to get wafer thin. I keep saying wafer thin. Is that, the, is that a proper terminology? I, I am getting extremely, extremely thin cuts on the Atoma 140. I mean, you know, this, this is probably the thinnest piece I've got here, and it is really thin. I mean, you can see, you guys can see my finger from the backside, right? <laughs> And then I didn't even strop it on the strop. You know, I figured, you know what? It's 140 grit. Maybe it can use a little bit of assistance or a handicap on the roll buffalo strop. Um, but I said, you know what? Let's just go without it and see how it performs as is. And I mean, I am extremely impressed <laughs> with the actual edge of it there. It's a really, really sharp knife. I can feel just by holding this knife here, it is a bit more toothy than the other knives. Um, so that's, you know, for those who are cutting tomatoes, going lower grit is not going to be a bad thing at all. There was a company that reached out to me not long ago and they claimed that they had designed a knife. It was on Kickstarter and it raised, I don't know, it raised like, uh, I want to say a million dollars. Um, so because it, it's using, you know, really high grade steel, like the steel that you can only use for sh spaceships. And it showed me a clip of this guy holding a knife uh, on the, fl I guess they, they rigged this knife on the cutting board on the floor at an angle, like a 45 degree angle. And the guy dropped it from waist high or the counter height, you know, counter height. Okay, so you drop a tomato from the height of four feet or so, yeah, it's gonna cut. I don't care how dull the knife is. So I said, you know, what if I can do that same cut from this height here? I took a partially cut tomato and I dropped it from a height of roughly, this is about what, a foot and a half or so? I dropped it and it cut. And keep in mind, I've never done a tomato cut test or drop cut test ever like up until today, ever. <laughs> so I said, all right, let's just drop one of the partially cut tomatoes from I think knife number three on the uh, on the Atoma 140 knife. And it cut, it cut the tomatoes clean in half. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, that's not right. Let's try this again. So I took the half that was cut off, dropped it again from the same height and it cut. And I said, oh my goodness, okay. So let's just try to lower my height lower my height, right? So I dropped it from a lower height, about a foot, it cut. And so I kept on doing it from different pieces. Whenever I cut that piece, I took that piece that was just cut and I dropped it down. And I went as low as like six inches on a piece that was fairly already pretty, pretty, you know, well cut up. And a couple pieces got caught because they're just too light. They don't have the weight, uh, the momentum to carry them through the cut. The point is, on the Atoma 140, the coarsest whetstone or the coarsest grit plate that I have, I was able to reproduce the, the the cut test that all of these knife forum people talk about. You know that they knives can cut wafer thin tomato slices um, with using a 10,000 grit whetstone, 12,000 grit whetstone. You can replicate these results yourself with a 140 Atoma. <laughs> I don't consider myself a sharpening expert. I'm just a hobbyist and enthusiast. I love sharpening. And I've just been able to hone my skills to where I can sharpen a knife fairly well. You guys have to remember when I do a test in a video, take that video or the results of that video for what it is, right? This is just showing you that you guys can get a very sharp knife on a very low grit whetstone. Um, the higher grit whetstones still have their purpose. People who are sharpening their knives may want a specific polish level, uh, especially this is especially true for your sushi knives and your single bevel knives and or even just knives that people like to have really nice, you know, glossy and mirror polishes on their knives. The higher grit whetstones still have their purpose. 
you know, so this is just an encouragement to those who don't have a lot of money, who can't buy expensive whetstones. You don't need expensive whetstones to have a sharp knife. Expensive whetstones are fun to use. They will make your knives sharper faster. But in terms of getting a knife sharp, it's all on you, all on you. So the next time a knife troll tells you you've got to buy a 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 plus grit whetstone to get amazing cut results, you can show them this video. Okay? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for being here, and I'll catch you in the next one. Oop. Oop. There it is. <laughs> let's, let's cut that half in half. Uh, whoa. Here we go. See? See how easy that is? Let's lower the height. Oh. Ooh. You see that? That was even lower. That was about eight inches or so. Let's try this again. Eight inches, six inches. Ah. Oh, it got most of it. Ooh, this one got the whole thing. Look at that. Ha, <laughs>